Nobody in my family ever gone to jail. Hey, wait a minute! My son is in prison and he's a good man. Not everybody who goes to prison is bad. Not everybody in prison is good. You do the crime, you do the time. Yeah? I used to think that too until my son landed himself in jail for a bit of nothing. And then all of his friends went free as birds. Point! We live in the United States of America. Where one out of every 138 of us has done time. time. When we went to the prison, and the guy who was giving us the tour took us into a um, isolation, a solitary confinement. And while we were standing there, closed the door. That made a huge impression on, on these students. Suddenly they understood exactly what it would feel like to be in this, this context. Then when he took us out and showed us the exercise area for these men, which was a cage that was maybe eight feet long and, and eight feet wide, um, they also understood what the nature of the, of the issues were. And so that, and then through the book, and not all of them participated in the, in the reading groups, but the ones who did got an idea that it wasn't just this one place, that it was a national movement, that it was a national problem, and, um, and so they made a connection between their own individual experience and a larger pol socio-political context. And that, that informed what it was that they were doing. Um, I, you know, I, th I think that they, they were able to m more forcefully deliver their lines knowing exactly what it was they were talking about, at least to a certain extent. But you can bet I caught on fast. They say that prison is the poor man's college. The school of life. You learn about surviving because at any point in time you could be killed. If you are protein versus to the mass, it will be considered an act of aggression and will result in the use of firepower. The officers don't give a damn about you. They're here for eight hours. If an inmate were to be killed in eight hours, they'd still go home to their families for their paychecks. Um, when you did th this play, which may have been somewhat different from the things that you usually did, right. uh, as you've indicated, um, then what happens with the students when they go on to the next project with you? What's the effect, <laughs> or is there an effect? There is, to, s to some extent. I think that there was a certain number of, p of, of students who were somewhat dissatisfied with whatever their next experience was going to be. <laughs> Right, they, they suddenly had gotten jazzed about a new approach to things, and then the next play that I did was, I don't know what, I think it was Psycho Beach Party, you know, I mean, it was just like, <laughs> it had no connection at all to anything that, that we were doing. Um, the only thing that I would say connected to that is, we were very fortunate, I believe the year after I did Thousand Kites, to have hired a person whose area was community-based arts. And so when she came in and started doing a little bit more politically um, connected work, there was a group of students who were ready f to do that with her. And I think that helped her transition into the department a little bit better. My brother and me, we were working minimum wage jobs before we got out of the prison. Not long after we started, I could tell he wasn't going to stick with it. He'd say to me, the prisoners hate us. And I'd tell them, they have their own world and we do not enter into it. He'd say, don't you see how these people live? Young people, old people, different colors. And a lot of them in here for life. It's a sad, hopeless place to work. So he quit. Now he's mowing grass with a push mower and a weed eater out of the back of his car. Says he's a whole lot more now, but a lot more satisfied. Me? I feel like I'm protecting my family. When I came in for the, you know, the first tech, it was lit like a traditional play. Mm -hmm. You know, with very, very strong differentiation between the stage and the audience, and strong down lighting, and you know, it was, and and I, I was like, this is not. I want the audience to see themselves to be able to 
break this down so that we can have a conversation. If they're sitting in the dark watching a play, and then I bring the lights up, it's just a traditional post-show discussion. And they've watched a play. I want them to be part of it. And so that's also when we integrated the, the snapping thing, if you agreed with something, or things like that, just to get them practiced, <laughs> so that when the lights went up, they would have, a, have something to say. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a struggle. You bring a play like that in, and your lighting designer, is, you know, or your set designer, or whatever it is, wants to turn it into a play. Right. And that's what we're, uh, when uh, we were touring to uh, all of our plays, you know, we have the lights slightly up in the audience because we talk directly to them. There's no fourth wall, like you're saying, so yeah. it's exactly what you're talking about. And going uh, to some uh, theaters, we had a hard time with the lighting crew to right. <laughs> that we were sort of ruining their creation. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But so anyway, thank you. Thank and you. thank you for, for doing that with your students. Right. It, it really meant a lot. It was a wonderful experience for me. Helis is bejeweled with diamonds. I seek the treasure in the trap. The joy in the despair. The peace of a simple life. The beauty that was not intended. That can be seen and kept as a gift. A gift. <laughs>